All right, another video that people asked me to make this week. It's a week for that. Yesterday I did a video I forgot to do on Friday. This is a week where someone's like, please, please, please talk about this. And it's about a comment I made a while ago about shifting uh, advertising demographics and why that's important and why it's caused a shift in what what we see in media that's been attributed possibly to other things, but it's it's really just about good old capitalism. It's about making money. When I worked in television, the key demographic was 18 to 34 year old men, specifically 18 to 34 year old men. Why? 18 to 34 year old men were not only seen as having the most disposable income of any demographic, but they were also the most persuadable by advertising, meaning advertising worked on, on that particular demo. And that, that was why we saw a lot of what people called male gays advertising, you know, women in bikinis, uh, advertising everything from beer to hamburgers to alcohol, where you can advertise alcohol on television, things like that. You get what I'm saying, right? Like everything was 18 to 34 year old male. There has been a shift. It started 2010 to 14 um, with the rise of streaming services, which are often commercial free. 18 to 34 year old men stopped watching television in the same numbers. And they also found, advertisers found, that the female head of a household, often mom, uh, had an influencer factor in that if, say, Dove soap was the soap that you used in your house or Tide dish detergent, um, sorry, Tide laundry detergent was what was used in your house, then you were more likely to use that product as an adult. So... Advertising shifted to, some will argue that it's 18 to 49 or 25 to 54. Um, in the U.S., it's more 18 to 49. In Canada, we don't, last time I checked, we don't have the 18 to 49 demo. We have 25 to 54. Um, but it shifted to a slightly older cohort female or mixed viewership, meaning male, female, or female, because of that influencer factor and because men don't watch as much TV as, as they used to. Younger viewers are, in general, bleeding away from TV. Um, and, and this explains a lot of the wokeness that we're seeing in media now, shows aimed at, at women, shows aimed at a growing black middle class, shows aimed at Latinos. Um, it has nothing to do with being good people. It has nothing to do with being um, compassionate about the human race and hashtag feminism and all that stuff. And it has everything to do with money and what they can sell to advertisers and what advertisers want. Um, and, and that's very important when you're looking at the reasons why demographics are shifting. Um, film is still much more male, um, than, than television is now. Film is still younger than television is. And, and you'll notice there's, there's a lot less of a, of a pivot in the same way. Obviously there are some movies but but don't be mistaken something like black panther people don't plan for that and the reason there has been so much omg around films like that is because it it proved the conventional wisdom wrong that's not the same forces that are happening in television the the television shift to more female friendly stuff is totally a money thing. And if all of a sudden young men decided to go back to watching TV, the advertiser demographics would go with them because advertisers still want 18 to 34 year old men because they're more persuadable. Um, and and that may that may scratch your head. A lot of you may know this. But that may leave you scratching your head. Wait a minute. The most malleable people in our culture drive what we see. Yeah, 
I'm afraid so. That's exactly what's going on. Um, television is driven by advertisers. A lot of shows uh, that weren't big hits its first few years that went on to be big hits survived because young men watched them. Cheers, the sitcom, is an example of that. Now, the idea of young men um, watching sitcoms now is is that doesn't happen, right? You get sitcoms like The Good Place that do well, and, and that's more of a mixed audience skewing female. Um, oddly, both those shows have Ted Danson in them. Wow, okay. Ted Danson's been around a long time, but obviously his appeal has, has changed significantly. Um, but what's interesting is that is also why premium cable punches above its weight class in the zeitgeist. Premium cable still has a large number of 18 to 34 year old male viewers, which is why a show like Westworld or Game of Thrones or Mad Men or Entourage that, you know, you actually look at the numbers, the, the overall numbers uh, for uh, Game of Thrones, which, which was huge by cable standards, and compare that to something like NCIS, Blue Bloods, or the Big Bang Theory, the audience for, for premium cable is dwarfed by something like Breaking Bad, Better Call Saul, any of those, Walking Dead even, the numbers of people watching are dwarfed by the number of people watching these uh, network procedurals and sitcoms. However, it's different people watching. Um, I mean, there's a reason that Mark Harmon and uh, Tom Selleck are prominent in, um, in shows like NCIS and Blue Bloods because they are the ones who were the young hotshots when uh, the people watching were young. Now, that's really great for things like, um, you know, Tom Selleck is also the, um, the spokesman for reverse mortgage commercials. Um, and that's because it, they cater to old people. Old people own their homes outright. They can do reverse mortgages. Um, and, and so it's interesting. There are still products for older demographics. I watch a lot of news and, and things like that. I watch a lot of old people TV. So, uh, I, I watch my, my premium cable stuff too, but I, I get a little burned out on that stuff like I'll binge a series there and then I'll go back and 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 binge watch NCIS because it's safe uh it's been really good this year though I'm really surprised it's like why aren't these shows just safe and reliable why are they challenging me okay um but uh you know as it's gonna be an interesting shift as the boomers start passing away What's going to happen to advertising? What's going to happen to television? Are younger people who were previously cord cutters, streaming only types going to come back to television? Or is the entire model going to have to change again? Um, is the idea of a, a core television demographic going to fade away? Now, the one thing that may save television is reality television, event television that is still very successful with shows like The Voice and The Masked Singer and, and all those types of shows, those skew female 18 to 34. So, you know, women, younger women are still watching television in a way that young men aren't. And so that is going to impact what kind of shows we see on TV. It has nothing to do with wokeness. It has nothing to do with, with hashtag feminism and everything to do with simple business realities. So I thought that was interesting. Um, obviously, video games are different. Video games are still overwhelmingly male. And I think the content in games reflects that. That probably has something to do with some of the fighting that goes on surrounding video games because people who, who don't know this information go, well, everybody else is doing it. Why can't games? It's like the market's not the same. Like video games still have those 18 to 34 year old males in a way that television doesn't. So, you know, video games, video games really change the game in a lot of ways in that way. So, um, and yes, the sewing machines back boss fight costumes, but, uh, speaking of programming, but, um, yeah, I made this video so so people could understand. I don't know how well it's going to do, but 
people seem very interested in in how this works. Now, what does this mean? It means that be very suspicious of anybody who claims they are programming for a particular demographic out of the goodness of their heart. No network, bless you, Momo. No network, no film studio, none of these corporations do things out of the goodness of their hearts. They do them because they think there's money involved. And that's all. And that's part of the reason that the whole woke culture might seem so strange as well. All right. Hope that was informative to you. If you like this sort of stuff, like I said, it doesn't necessarily do all that well on YouTube because algorithms help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. You may notice we enjoy capitalism here. Thanks for watching.